hang on to your seat, baby, cause this one's a screamer. What is going on? It's your time. So Tom comes out with another Hollywood topic. So we talk about the most salacious news in Hollywood. Before I get started, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, let me know what y'all think about this video. Okay, so Stevie J has come out um, and basically slammed the allegations that were made in the in the lawsuit that was served to Diddy in regards to the guy Rodney. So you guys saw in the lawsuit video. Rodney claims that P. Diddy showed him a video of Stevie J sleeping with another man, but he didn't do his due diligence to really look at the video because he, and in the court document says, I'm a heterosexual man. Didn't check to verify if that was him or not. You could have made a girl watch it if you were that uncomfortable because not a lawsuit kind of looks a little frivolous because of that, but I do agree. I do believe a lot of the stuff that he alleged in the lawsuit. So he says, I wasn't that guy. The last time, I ain't never going to be that guy. I'm one of God's favorites. Don't play with my name, okay? My whole thing is, Stevie J acted like he, he a big wig now. Stevie, you was the big wig then, okay? I don't know about now. Like, this man acted like, you know, he's the new hit maker, okay? He's new Ice Spice's new producer, all right. Now I will say, Rodney, you should be ashamed of yourself for what you did uh, in that part of the lawsuit because that was crazy for you to say that was him and show video proof, screen grabs, whatever it was, and not do your research is crazy to me. Like, I feel like that's going to make him look less credible because you literally said this is a video of somebody and it's not that person. And the person who is in the actual video came out and said, hey, that's me. So it just doesn't look good. All right. Now, Portia, you guys asked the judge to enforce the prenup between her and Simon. Reportedly wants each party to keep their assets to themselves. So this further proves what we've all been saying. They want to protect the finances. OK, that's why she's even going back on the show. She wants the coin. So that way, if anything happens with the fraud that was going on, He's gonna, she's gonna be good. She's not gonna have her pockets affected, which is smart on her end. Portia has gotten a lot smarter over the years. Are we proud? We come from the Underground Railroad, and now she's protecting her assets. Rosa Parks shed a tear. I'm kind of scared for Portia. Let me tell y'all why. If he's legally not married to you, even though I still think they're going to be still physically together, relationship wise, that leaves him up open for grabs. Because then it's like, he's no longer married. Them Atlanta girls will end up going crazy for Mr. Guavadia. So Portia needs to be very careful with this whole situation and don't think that it's all peaches and cream just because you're legally protecting yourself. Because now he's up for grabs. Some women do not care if a ring is on there. Even when a ring is on a nigga, they still don't care. So imagine if the ring is off the nigga. And legally, he's not attached to you. Portia, you in deep, 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 deep trouble more than what she thinks. All right. Now, Wendy's uh, Williams producers of the documentary said that they had no clue that she had dementia and they would have never rolled the camera if that was the case. I still have the two parts to recap. I'm going to do it in one video. I call a cap on this. The cap is really on your head. It's the cap for me. Yeah, the cap is on your hair, on the top of your head. The, cap is the on wig your is the hair. cap. The wig is the cap. And we're not talking about Wendy's wig. We're talking about the producer's wig. You mean to tell me you didn't think she had some form of dementia and she didn't remember what the Oscars was? Like, come on. That was the inkling to show y'all like, oh, no, this lady got some form of dementia. Because she covers celebrity news and gossip. You wouldn't think she wouldn't remember what the Oscars was? That's not just old age. Mind you, the whole docu-series, she's trying to pursue getting back either on TV, a podcast, et cetera, et cetera, sitting down with NBC. And she doesn't remember what the Oscars was. And y'all don't think, y'all didn't think that was some form of dementia? Lies. Lies. Y'all knew it was going to make money. And you guys kept the cameras rolling because the footage 
had her looking erratic. Okay? That's why I continue to roll. The producer said, we were more worried about what would happen if we stopped filming than if we continue. Producers say the documentary was originally supposed to document her journey of starting a podcast after her talk show ended and her marriage to Kevin Hunter failed. Producers said they had no idea she had dementia on the first day of filming because her team blamed her bizarre behavior on alcohol. Basically, the story that was given to us after that day was that it was a bad day for Wendy and the alcohol had been involved and now she was going to go away to a treatment facility and she was going to get under that control. Ford says after noticing her behavior wasn't changing, he decided to take a different approach with the film. The editorial direction that we landed upon was the family's point of view and illustrating what can happen when one of your family members is put into guardianship outside of con your control, he explained. We just happened to be there every day seeing the reality of the situation, and we just put the camera on it and captured it for Cloud and Clay Bait. Okay? Now, I will say you can tell that the docuseries was heavily edited and had a lot of post edits because there was interviews that was done like way, way, way after the filming. Even, okay, this one confused me too. The interview with the son, why did he look like it was AI? He was sitting there like, I'm like, why does he look like that? The footage looked funny. He didn't look like himself. I'm talking about Kevin Jr. There's two interviews that he did. One where he had, the, he had his hair out and one where he had his hair twisted. The one where he had his hair twisted, that was weird to me. I felt like that wasn't him. Like they had an AI version of him talking. It looked fuzzy. It, like he didn't, the, his skin color looked, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm watching this just confused, okay? Let me know if y'all noticed the same thing. Is they tuned y'all for the last two parts of the recap. Now, Robin, it gets worse. It gets worse. You would think it would not get worse, but it gets worse. Robin, Robin on a recent episode of Potomac says that Juan wouldn't mind an activity done with him with her with another man in the bedroom. <laughs> What is a fetish that your partner has asked you to do? Oh, what do I be getting you to do? I want to know. Fetish? Yes, I know it's something nasty. I mean, I've not done it, but he would like to watch me with a <gasps> With a girl or not with anybody? Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm not doing it. I think he even knows that I wasn't doing girl, so he's like, okay, it could be a girl. Uh, Oh, who's surprised? It's Karen's face. Oh, my God. Like, Robin just makes it worse every season. So you mean to tell you, tell me that he wants a cockhold? Pierre, what's a cockhold? If y'all don't know what a cockhold is, for all of my uh, uh, entertainers that are not cockhold uh, watchers previously or corn watchers, cockhold is a man who finds arousement and watching his girlfriend says, watch have SES with another man. In a sentence, damn, gotta find myself some of that cockhold corn. <laughs> that is crazy. There are some things I just feel like you shouldn't say on real television. You have just embarrassed this man again. So now we know he would want to see his wife get down with another nigga. To me, I could do that. I don't care. I don't care. I don't give a crap. I'm. I'm selfish, okay? I, I don't share. And I get jealous easily. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> uh -uh. It is his fantasy. Couples have done it. We've seen the swinger stuff. Look at P. Diddy. It's not surprising. It's just certain stuff you just can't see on TV, especially hopefully he gave you consent to put that out there for the world to know because that's insane. So you guys wanted me to react to who the, did I marry? So I'm going to react to the first hour of who the, did I marry on TikTok. On TikTok, This woman put up a series of TikTok that is four hours long about how she got manipulated, lied to by a man that she was married to, met, was in a relationship with, etc.
disclaimer video. First and foremost, I'm going to be truthful, even if it makes me look bad. I'm going to be honest, but I'm also not going to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved. I'm not going to use people's real names because I don't have their permission. Hi, and welcome. We all know why you're here. You're here for part of the new series that I'm calling, Who the Fuck Did I Marry? I'm going to create this playlist series, um, and I'm going to tell the story of how I met, dated, married, and divorced a real pathological liar. Um, this is my- I hate liars! I need to clip that. Introduction slash disclaimer video. First and foremost, I'm going to be truthful, even if it makes me look bad. I'm going to be honest, but I'm also not going to be disrespectful to anyone that was involved. I'm not going to use people's real names because I don't have their permission to do so. And <laughs> the sister does not want any sort of litigation. Um, I will tell you off the top, I have a sense of humor and I have sarcasm. So things that you see me laughing at, none of this is funny. But in order to get through it, I have to laugh. If I cry, I cry. I'm human. I'm a woman. This was traumatic. Um, I'm going to do the best I can to upload as much of the story as I can um, because I know people get so annoyed with the follow for part four, follow me for part 17. I'm just going to do the best I can to keep uploading the videos each at a time. I'm going to go in order from the time we met until the time I got our divorce decree in the mail. So her that ponytail is holders are cute. <laughs> I never seen that before. She has ponytail holders. <laughs> a lot of time to cover. Please give me the grace to just get it out. Um, it may not be all in one day. It may not be all in two days. But what I can tell you is even if you don't necessarily, necessarily see a video, I'm probably recording it and then I will upload it into the playlist titled, Who the Fuck Did I Marry? Um, what else do I need to cover ahead of time? Because I feel like this video is important to give some sort of context. So that way, when people jump into the series, they kind of can figure out, oh, let me start at the introduction video and then work my way through. Um, a lot of the questions that you all have sent me will be answered when I start and tell the story in order. Um, everything I'm going to tell you can be verified. There are people in my life who can easily verify yes this did happen yes he really did do that yes he said that um yes she did go through that i have no contact whatsoever with my ex-husband in any way shape or form um we do not communicate we do not have mutual friends or anything but that we're where we communicate through those people no contact I cannot stress that enough because I feel like somebody's going to ask me, do you still talk to him? No, I ain't seen him. I ain't heard from him. I don't want to hear from him. And I will tell the entire story up until the last time I did hear from him and what happened. Um, yeah, this is, this is my story. So um, I am just a regular woman who thought she might as well start saying, you don't know my story. The anguish and the guilt that consumes me. Grateful I can tell it. The one. And I did it. <laughs> um, most people have never came in contact with a pathological liar. We typically come in contact with like a compulsive liar. It is not the same. A pathological liar has no reason for why they lie. And the lies that they make up, there's no limit to the lie. Um, 
I was once a psychology major in undergrad. I didn't graduate with a psychology degree, but I'm very comfortable saying that he was a pathological liar. He was a narcissist. And yes, there was some mental, in my opinion, mental health issues going on. Pathological lying part, absolutely. Um, so I want to preface all this by saying, you're going to probably think, what in the world? There's no way this happened. Everything you're going to hear me say actually did happen. Um, I never thought I was going to be in some sort of Lifetime movie, but. Child, I, Toby is writing a script as we speak. This is my first time reacting to this, y'all. So this is my natural reaction, okay? But I've been seeing all our reactions about it. Yes. Um, so I will read the comments as best I can. Like I said, I think if you allow me to tell the whole story, things will be answered. Um, and sorry, I do talk with my hands. It's just, it's a coping mechanism. So if you're like, why is she doing with her hands? Um, other than that, let's all take a deep breath. Bubble I feel up. like I'm in a therapy session. <laughs> Let's all take a deep breath. <sighs> because this was a fucking crazy ride. And if you think it's crazy, imagine how I feel as the person who lived it and had no idea what I was dealing with. I thought I knew, but I truly had no idea who the fuck I married. You like how to listen to that anyway. All right, y'all. Um, this is the introduction. Thank you, thank you. So welcome. Part one will be up shortly. She need to drop the link for the pigtail holders. Please excuse the hair, but here is part one of who the fuck did I marry? Um, so I met my ex-husband around March 4th of 2020. We met on Facebook dating site and we also matched on hinge um i did not realize that he, <laughs> he was on both um under two different names so one was his actual name and the other one was a variation like a nickname red um, flag i swear to god <laughs> like, i'm telling you now i'm so like i'm like i'm telling y'all these past couple of years, I've learned so much. Red flags to me are so easy to spot. A nigga don't want to tell you what they do. Red flag. They don't want to tell you they run a red flag. Like, huh. It's just so much red flags that's easily, uh, you know, identified nowadays. It's ridiculous. Okay? I've never been on no hinge before. Is it worth it for my entertainers that's been on hinge? Um, that he called himself different pictures so it was a running joke between us oh you ain't even recognize that um you had matched with me on hinge no i didn't um and also that should have been a red flag by the way you will notice in this story i called it the united nations of red flags it is so many red flags that i mean you would have thought i was colorblind because i ignored all of them so anyway back to the story. We met around March 4th. We exchanged phone numbers. He called me and we talked on the phone um, for the first time. In the first phone call, he told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California, from San Diego. His job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based here in Georgia. I'm not going to say the name. And so we also talked about his childhood. He told me um, he grew up in Philly. He's from Philly. Both of his parents were deceased. This is the first phone call. Both of his parents were deceased. His father um, was a Philadelphia police officer. His mom was a teacher. He also told me he um, went, he briefly lived in Augusta um, with his family. He had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. So I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone call we had. So we talked about family. We talked about friends. We talked about our jobs. At the time, I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Um, 
and he knew this and he just thought that was like, wow, you know, so you work with troopers all day. Yes, I did. Um, also in that phone call, he explained to me that he um, used to play football. He explained that he used to play arena football. I know nothing about arena football. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Go dogs. But I don't know anything about arena football. So he explained to me that he used to play arena football. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, oh, okay, you know, like, good for you. I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. That'll come into play later on. So... Child, that already sounded fishy. What type of football is arena football? What the hell is that? That sounds like Spanish soccer, like arena football. I'm telling y'all, if y'all don't ignore the red flags at the beginning, it will be a detriment later on. Told me, you know, I just I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing, be, and they are helping me to look for a house. He was like, I'm trying right now, I'm in Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house ideally in Atlanta, like Brookhaven, um, Sandy Springs. He was like, I, I really would like to move out there. And so I thought, you know, this is, that's great. You know, you're looking to get a house. You just moved here. He was like, I don't really know too, too many people here because I spend all my time at work and, you know, this job is really demanding. So that was our first phone call. We talked more, he talked a lot, which took me by surprise because I'm not really used to men talking more than me. Um, he eventually asked me out on a date. Our first date was set for Saturday, March 7th, 2020. Um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant. I said, Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> and so we agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton County at the time. He lived in Gwinnett County. I realized that if you don't know anything about Metro Atlanta, that makes no sense. But basically we lived uh, about 45 minutes apart. So we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory over at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area, Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area. I was excited. Like I called my friends and was like, I got a date, you know, blah, blah, blah. We'll see how it goes. First conversation was good. Um, hopefully he looks like his pictures because, you know, that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully he looks like his pictures. So on my way to our date, I took 285. You know, she's a girl that takes a risk because, bitch, it's called FaceTime. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> FaceTime with social media. No, no. I'm not wasting my gas. And then I show up and you look like a completely different person. The nerve, nigga. Hell no. Nah. Nigga, hell no. Nah. Okay. No, 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 no. She takes risks. And literally right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom. And I lost control of my car. Thank God that this, well, not thank God, but I knew what to do. So I did not crash, but my tire blew out. So I called him and I said. That was God redirecting her um, destination. God was saying, I don't want you to marry. Okay. Like uh, Mama Joyce's uh, sister said, I don't want you to marry. Okay. And then want her to go on that date. So he tried to stop her. But. Like I said, she has a mission. She wanted to get it done. Okay? She take risks. Said, hey, I'm so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station. And I said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like, I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. He kind of paused. He got quiet. And he was like, Where, you know, tell me exactly where you are, drop your pen. So I dropped the pen and he came to the gas station, came to the gas station, got out the car, 
and I was I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures that I was like, oh my God, he's actually a, attractive because he's like six four, six five. Um. Oh, also, man, I apologize. So let me go back to the first conversation. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is that he was divorced, um, and that his ex wife they had she had. Um, two children, a boy and a girl who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about 20 and he set up kids, um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him um, out in California. And so coming to Georgia was a new beginning for him. She was still out in California. The kids were still out in California. Um, and so you know, he was like, there's no, I, I can't stand her, but I still want to be in the kids' lives. I have to put that in there because that will come back later. So this is just setting the stage. Again, that first conversation was, we talked about family, job, friends, um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, you know, I would think people talk about in the first conversation. All right, now back to the tire blew out. So he shows up to the gas station. He changes my tire, which I just thought was the sexiest thing in the world. Um, and then he proceeds to say, hey, I found a, play, a tire place around the corner. You need to get another tire. Like, you can't drive on this donut. So he followed me to, um, he followed me to, the, to the tire place and then helped me get a tire paid for it. So I was definitely like, wow. Um, and so the vibe was good. So anyway, get the- He's not broke, okay. It's promising, the risk was worth it for now. Get the tire fixed, we follow each other to the Cheesecake Factory over in Perimeter. We hold hands walking into the Cheesecake Factory. So in my mind, I'm like, this is just this. Oh my God! I had butterflies. That that's that's the look of a woman who had butterflies. So I had butterflies, and um, we go in. There's a long wait, and so we sit outside and we just talk, and the conversation's great. And this is where he tells me what it is he's looking for. He tells me. You know, I'm, I believe at the time he was 42, he was like, I want to get married and it'd be for real. He's like, my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away. And I want that. I want marriage, family, a house. Like that is what I want. He was like, I'm, you know, I'm as a man, I'm ready to get married, but I want it to be for real because the first time you know, it really hurt me when she cheated on me. So he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear. Um, and so he was like, what is it that you want? And I said pretty much the same thing. I was like, I'm ready to get married. Definitely want to have a family. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. So we both put on the table that we wanted marriage. And this is the end of part one. All right, who the fuck did I marry? Part two. So we both um, put on the table what it is that we wanted. We both had established we were dating for marriage. We were not dating just to date. We were not trying to be friends with benefits and none of that. Um, so the the dinner at Cheesecake Factory went really well. We laughed, we joked, we talked about people, which um, <laughs> is kind of up my alley, my sense of humor. It was just, it was a good vibe. So at the end of the date, or excuse me, at the end of dinner, we sat in his car and he played this song for me by John Legend. I Let don't me know. They all of me. Okay, probably all of me trying to woo her. No, deep down, he's toxic. Damn, you should know that nigga was up to some play John Legend. What nigga listen to John Legend? Girl, bye. You know, Dale way listen to rap music. You trying to be all romantic. <laughs> Niggas, I tell you. 
name of the song by the t well by the time this video posts i will put the name at the bottom i can't remember the song i just remember that john or, Lennon was or it was best thing ever had i don't want to brag but i'll be best thing ever had i don't want to brag feature ludicrous one of the two talking about i think i met my wife tonight and I thought it was a sign. So I was like, oh my God. So anyway, we ended up sitting in the car talking just about life and experiences until about midnight. So during this conversation, he again is telling me how it was, you know, what it was like living in California, how he went out there. He went to San Diego State. He played football for San Diego State. Um, he talked about how, you know, life what he loved it out there so he stayed um that's when he joined the company um and then he explained that he also did arena football but only did it for about two or three years he claims that i'm getting impatient i need to know what the hell arena football is because i don't want even a sport granny a nigga i don't know what the hell that is so arena football it's a game resembling American football that is played on a shorter indoor field between two teams of eight players each. So not professional. Bet. While he was doing arena football, the team that he was on won a championship. But again, keep in mind, I don't know anything about arena football. So I was like, okay, I didn't know that they had championships. And he was like, you know, he got a little offended, like, yeah, they got championships. And, you know, he was on that team. So he talked to me about how he worked at Apple. He worked um, something in the IT area of Apple, but it was in the store. Again, it was one of those. It's like when I tell people I used to work at Amazon, I, I really wasn't paying much attention to it. Why? So. We talked about all that. We talked about, uh, we talked deeply into what happened with the ex-wife. It's because I asked. He was not volunteering all this information. So in other words, I, I get very uncomfortable when men start talking about their ex a lot. That's not what happened. I was asking questions because I was really trying to figure out, okay, is this a, are you ready for a relationship or are you still um, missing her? So we talked about that. We talked about my exes. That was a mistake I made because I talked about how I dated at one point in time, somebody I worked with that will come back later. Um, and he seemed real cool about it. He was like, you know, that was before me and blah, blah, blah. Um, so the conversation was good. Midnight comes and um, I go home. Yes, I went home. We ended up talking, talking, and talking. Mind you, our first date was March 7th. And within about two and a half weeks, Brian Kemp, our governor, shut Georgia down. We were about to, we were going to be on lockdown. So during those two and a half weeks, we talked and every day. And this relationship was on COVID. Ah, oh, that means sister girl went through trauma. I already see where this is headed. COVID time was the worst when it comes to dating, et cetera. Because you're forced into some of these situations. It's not my choice. Went out again at Red Lobster. Um, I don't even, I remember Red Lobster. Um, but everything was going great. The issue was, where are we going to quarantine? So the question was, are we going to quarantine at his place? Which he had like a studio type of situation like it clearly where he was staying um i was like it's like a studio apartment but he kept telling me like this is temporary because i'm looking for a house like he showed me he showed me the email from the from a woman who worked at the company where she was out on maternity leave but she was she was putting him in contact <clears throat> with a realtor to help him find a town home or a single family house. So I was just like, okay, this is definitely temporary. Like he's not trying to stay here long-term. 
and she was apologizing in the email. I'm so sorry, you know, this should have been taken care of before you got here, but it wasn't. Da, 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 da. I saw the email. I saw the email. I read it. I read the email. Um, so the decision was, are you, we're going to quarantine at the studio or are we going to quarantine in my house? First mistake I made. Well, there's a lot, but this was a mistake I made. So ladies. Sorry. <laughs> at least she's honest. You got to give it up to her. Some people can, I, I'll never do that like this because girl, bye. Imagine going viral for a traumatic story. I'll be fucking damned. Okay. No. Okay. It's one thing to put it up on the two, but TikTok blows quick. All right. Now, what bothers me is she skipped. Okay. What happened between the first day and now y'all quarantining? Did you guys go on more dates? Did you guys meet each other's family? Do you know his son, a daughter name? Questions I have. Caution moment. During one of our dates. Okay. Um, because keep in mind, in those two weeks, we were seeing each other quite a bit. Okay. Um, nothing physical or anything like that. Just two people who were who I thought were really on some. All right, let's see if this is going if this if this is going to grow into something. He came to my house. When he came to my house, I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhome. He was in a studio. Now, I'm telling you guys all of this in in order of how it happened. So some, t some things I'm probably going to insert what I was thinking and the mistake I made. Can I turn this off? No. Okay, I still need that. Um, and I say that to say that I did not realize inviting him to my home um, probably made his eyes go, oh, shit, she's a keeper. She got this three bedroom, two and a half bath townhouse, and I'm in like a little studio. Yeah, let me let me let me go ahead and pursue this. What I need to do to quarantine here. The decision was made quarantine at my house. So we the state went on lockdown. He came and stayed with me um, in my home, and for the most part. Be, in the initial beginning, it was fine. It was, it was fine. The reason why I hesitate is because I grew up in the church. So for me, it was really like an internal struggle of, bruh, you always said you would never live with a guy unless he was your husband. And now you living with a dude and he ain't your husband. Like it was, it was a struggle for me because I knew better. And, I, and don't come for me. I'm just telling you the way you I better say you did better in my in my townhouse better in my townhouse better. <laughs> she is 100 percent right though, because show off that she's lavish and she's living well will make people want to stick around because they're like, oh my god, like you got a lot going for yourself. Like, damn, I need to I need to eat off of that because it's slim pickings out here. Niggas out here bums. They live with their mama. Okay, they getting supported by their mama. The mama paying their bills, right? They broke, ain't got no job, etc. So she has a point. I grew up. It was like that. It was not sitting right with me. But at the same time, I didn't want to quarantine by myself. I did not want to. So there we go. Um, so he moved in. We talked about the bills. Let me clear something up that I said in the other video where I said he paid all the bills. He paid all the household bills. He did not pay my car payment, my cell phone, or my car insurance. He paid the rent because my rent at the time was less than a $1,000. Um, he paid... Oh, hearing that makes me depressed. <laughs> Boy, can we go back, God, please? Oh. Who's, we gotta suck to be able to go back to the days. Imagine that, rent less than a thousand dollars. Even the damn um, auto subtitles thought she was tripping and put $11,000. Meanwhile, it was less than a thousand dollars. That's crazy. 
the utility bills. And, on, and so when he's telling me that he's a regional manager, I was like, wow, okay, so you got money. Um, <laughs> and so he paid, he paid all the household bills. So my check really was just taking care of me, myself, and I. And I am not, this is where oh, it's you not. You should have care of me, myself, and I, because I ain't got no man. That's what I'm talking about. And it ain't no need to cry, because I ain't I, I, you know, best friend. You should have been quarantined and me, myself, and I. It will make me look good, but it's the truth. I'll pay the bills. It was a wonderful feeling. And so I kind of pushed to the side the fact that, yeah, you shacking up, because it's like, but... Your page, you don't have to worry right now. Like he's he's taking care of all of April's bills before April even comes, because this was still March. So we're living together and I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, he's helping to cook and clean. And then we have a conversation about house. Is he still going to buy a house just for him? Or is he going to buy a house? where it's for us because we are going to try to make this thing work, be official, get married, have a family. So the question now on the table is what are we going to do? Cause I didn't want to stay in um, Riverdale, Georgia. I did not want to raise a family there. I refused to have a baby um, in Clayton County. So the decision was made. Not too much on Clayco. Let's start looking for a house for both of us. Remember, he was already looking for a house for him. But then he was like, you know what? We're together. I plan to marry you. Let's look for a, for a, a family home for the two of us. He was like, this is how much I was approved for. That's when he showed me the Chase paperwork. Um, it was a letter stating that he, and it had the Chase emblem at the top. He showed me a letter stating that he was approved for 700 and all right part three who the fuck did i marry so this is when he showed me a letter from chase with the chase logo at the top stating that he had been approved for a mortgage for excuse me for a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar mortgage or seven hundred fifty thousand dollar house so he was like we can't go over 750. And I said, I remember asking him, can you afford the mortgage on a $750,000 house? Because I know I can. This is when he explains to me, I told you how I played arena football. I invested my money really well. So he said, I have money that will help pay for the mortgage. He was like, we're good. Like, I'm I financially, I am okay. Um, he was like, that's why I'm able to get approved for $750,000 mortgage. So he told me that his money was in different savings accounts. He said please he had an account Lord, with Chase him. Bank. Please, he had account please, Lord, don't tell me later on in this story that this nigga's broke. Because that would be a tragic mistake if they move in and then she ends up paying all the bills. Oh, my God. <laughs> with U.S. Bank and he had an offshore account. This is what he told me. The offshore account, I was like, why? And he explained something about, oh, the U.S., <clears throat> excuse me, the U.S. imposes taxes on money when you have a certain amount in, in U.S. banks. He was like, so everybody knows that it's smart to have some money in an offshore account. Y'all, look, I live paycheck to paycheck. I Again, I was like, okay, that's whatever. I said, so you have the so you have the money um, to pay for to pay for a home. I'm also holding in my hand a letter from Chase saying that he was approved for seven hundred and fifty thousand. So I went off of what I saw. So we contacted a realtor. I won't say his name, but man, if he ever ever sees this TikTok, I owe this man such an apology. But we contacted a realtor in <clears throat> who was based in Cobb County because I was very adamant I wanted to move back to Marietta, Smyrna area um, in Cobb County, Georgia. He 
was fine with that. His whole attitude was, you know, you're going to be my wife, happy wife, happy life. So we met a realtor. I, I would find houses that I wanted to tour. Keep in mind that um, this was COVID. So at the time, we could not tour a home. It would have to it would have to be a virtual tour. So this particular realtor, we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia, not Cobb County, but nevertheless, it's in Douglasville. I was fine with Douglasville. So we found a house in Douglasville, Georgia. The realtor did a um, a, a, a FaceTime tour of the house. The house was, it was really a nice, it was a nice home. Four, five bedrooms, four baths. So we did a FaceTime tour of the home and the home was listed, I believe, roughly 400 and something thousand. I really liked the house. I could see myself living there. I could see us living there. I could see us with the kid there. This is now April just for timeline purposes. This is April. So he really liked the house. He was like, you know what? We'll put an offer in on the house. He was like, if you like it, because again, it was COVID, we weren't going to be able to see the house in person because the family still live there. So he said, um, I'll put an offer in. We'll see if it's accepted. I said, okay. So he puts an offer in. He's telling me he put an offer in. I need to clarify some things he told me and the things that I actually saw. So for this house in Douglasville, he told me he was putting an offer in. The realtor would call me because one thing that the realtor told us, he was like, if the woman likes the house, typically the house is going to get bought. So he kind of dealt with me a bit more than he did my ex-husband. Um, and again, this is April 2020. This is before we got married. So at the time, he was my boyfriend. So the realtor was calling me and was like, hey, you know, I am I'm, I put the offer in. And what the GM at Domino's. Oh, what a time. <laughs> that time was a strange, a strange couple of years. Ugh. They're asking for um, is proof of funds. And I, and I didn't know any, I don't, I did not know anything at this time about buying a house. So I was like, Hey, you probably need to talk to him because I'm not even listed on the mortgage. Like from the paperwork I saw, it was only in his name. So he, um, he called him, I guess they talked. I was not there. Um, but I'm assuming that they had talked. So the boyfriend is coming, my ex is coming home saying, yeah, I talked to so-and-so. I sent him over the paperwork. The offer was approved and <clears throat> they are going to try to do a virtual closing. First, we got to do an inspection. If the inspection goes all well, then we have to do a virtual closing. He t also told me that he put down earnest money on the home. He put down... I believe 5,000. He said, I, I just transferred the money over to the realtor's uh, account or whatever um, so that it could be earnest money for the house. So I'm just like, okay, great. He was like, so realistically, this is April. We should be able to get in that house um, by June. Okay, no problem. So this is what he told me. About three or four days later, I get a phone call from the from the realtor and the realtor is like, hey, I'm just checking to see what, you know, what you guys want to do about that house. So I was confused. I'm at work. Um, and I said, oh, I, I was told that he put an offer in. And the realtor was like, he did. I didn't know that he put an offer in. And I said, well, why wouldn't you know? Like, he told me he put the offer in and he um, he had paid earnest money, $5,000 earnest money. And so the realtor was like, well, let me call him and find out what's going on with that because I didn't know anything about it. So red flag, of course. So I call him and he's and he, in true 
narcissistic nature. He flips the script and he like goes off. He's like cussing going off like he shouldn't, excuse me, I have the hiccups. He shouldn't be calling you. If he has a question, he should call me because I'm the one that's on a mortgage. He was like, and now it's, you know, it's going to be an issue. And I said, well, did you put the offer in with him or not? And he said, no, I did not put the offer in with him. I put the offer in with a friend of mine who is a realtor so I can give him the business. So I never, I did not hear from that realtor again. So I was just like, is the house under contract or is it not? He was like, yes, the house is under contract. This is what, this is how crazy things work out. About three days later on realtor.com, I'm looking at the house because I was trying to figure out in my mind how I'm going to decorate. It shows the house is under contract. So show my boyfriend. My boyfriend's like, I told you it was under contract. He was like, I, I, like, did you not believe me? And I ain't had a heart to say, hell no, I didn't believe you. <laughs> like, it seemed too good to me. Um, but once I saw the house was under. That girl stood on the honeymoon stage, making it to she, seem like shit was sweet. Contract? I absolutely believe that, okay, this, it's under contract with him. Like, yeah, we're about to do inspection. We are about to move. Um, and so we had driven by the house because, again, keep in mind, a family's still living there. So we had driven by the house. At this point, he- uh, you, we got to check on that realtor, okay? Because God knows what might have happened to him because he said it's going to be a problem. Whoever that realtor is, if you're still alive, please come forward because we're worried. He was like, I want us to start looking for furniture so that way we can go ahead and order it. So when when it's time to move, the furniture is ready because, you know, it takes like six to eight weeks sometimes um, for furniture to be delivered if they don't have it in stock. Like he was he was very methodical and planning and saying this is what we need to do. So we started going to Home, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, because we had a printout of what the sellers were going to take they were going to take the appliances he had a printout let me be clear he had a printout so it said on there that they were going to take the appliances so we needed to get a new stove um new refrigerator new microwave all that stuff so we went to home depot and lowe's and i i went ham i chose all these new appliances and Here's where we get into the shopping. All right, part four. So we go to Home Depot, we go to Lowe's. I'm choosing all these appliances. He's taking pictures of this of the um, the SKU number. We have representatives helping us, and he basically explains to them, "Hey, we're we're buying a house. Um, we should be closing sometime in June." can we order this stuff now can i can i put a hold on it like what can we do because <clears throat> we're not ready for delivery i stood there as the home depot rep said we can hold it in our warehouse like you can buy something and we can hold it people do it all the time especially with covid so i watched him pay um i want to say it was about three or four it was either three fifty or five hundred. I watched him pay a deposit on a whole new set of appliances for them, and they were going to hold it until we were ready for delivery. I watched this, so I was like, "Okay, good deal. Like we got the appliances. Next, let's go to Rooms to Go and Ashley Furniture and find um, actual furniture." So we went all around rooms to go. We went to Ashley Furniture. We went to American Signature. And I, I I saw all these things that I wanted. Again, he's taking pictures of it. He was like, I can go online and order it. I didn't think anything of it because, again, I just saw that we held the appliances. So I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. Um, so April 
turns into May. May 2020 comes. Um, this is where things start to get a little interesting. May comes and obviously we had not done inspection. And I'm asking him all the time, what's, so what's the deal with the house? He was like, well, because of COVID, they're trying to get someone to do the inspection. But the guy that they had, it was always something. The guy they had caught COVID, so they're going to have to get somebody else. And he's And like, you know what sucks? Around that time frame, COVID was the excuse of the lifetime. You had to, you wanted to get out of something. Oh, bitch, I got COVID. You want to get out of work? I got COVID. This happened. Oh, I got COVID. So it's like, you can't even tell if somebody really lying or not, because I got COVID. He's like 15 houses backed up, so it'll be a while. So at this point in May, I know I look crazy. In this point in May of 2020, I started recording um, audio diaries. I don't know why. I, it was some something just made me just start recording my thoughts in, a, in an audio diary. And I still have them. And I would I would save them by the date. And um, I would just start talking about what's on my mind. So I was like, I knew, I knew there was something. Something was nagging me like, mm. but I, I kept pushing it out of my mind. I was like, you saw, th this is what I reminded myself. You saw him pay for the appliances. You know the house is under contract. You know that he told you that um, he's the one who put the house under contract. Why would, like, I remember saying to myself, why would he lie about that? This is so easy to verify. Why would he lie about that? Have you caught him in any other lie? And at the time, the answer was no. Um, so I really was like, maybe you just aren't used to a guy who actually does what he's supposed to do. Like I, I was questioning myself and then answering my own questions. So inspection didn't happen. Around mid May, I found out I was pregnant. Oh, May, 2020. When I found out I was pregnant, he was ecstatic and I was like, oh shit. The reason why I was oh shit is because number one, I'm plus size. Number two, because of my age, I was, I, I felt like it was probably gonna be a high risk pregnancy. Um, and I wasn't married. And that nagged, I cannot tell y'all how much it nagged me. There was a lot of internal. <clears throat> Fuck moving in with the nigga while uh, y'all wasn't married. You had a baby with the nigga have a baby 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 a billion a millionaire hopefully like that to me is worse than the moving in at least the moving in that's temporary the baby's permanent <laughs> struggle in between my family didn't even know that he had moved in at this point i told them you know that i was pregnant um when here's the thing with moving in before marriage i feel like that's not a bad thing because Think about you not living with somebody and y'all get married and y'all live with each other and y'all can't stand each other. That to me would be worse than the latter. So I feel like the moving in is not bad. It's the baby to me. I don't know if she keeps it or not, but it's the baby to me that is like crazy. But the moving in, is it really that bad? Not really. As long as it's written on paper, who gets what, who's paying what, et cetera, then there's not really an issue in my eyes. What y'all think? To the doctor everything looked good um but again because it was covid he couldn't go in with me um into the actual room so you know doing any sort of ultrasound doing the blood test because my hcg levels were really high so the doctor was like hey it might be twins we don't know yet um you're still kind of early you know along um they gave me a due date. The due date was January 26th of 2021. Um, so, yeah, uh, May, found out I was pregnant. So there was now more of a push into 
we got to get a house. We got to get the fuck up out of here. I'm not having a baby in Riverdale. Okay, nothing against Riverdale, but I ain't having a baby in Riverdale. So we need we need to we need to find out what's going on with this house. And so he was very he was on top of it. He had an answer for everything. Um, he was like, you know, I'm gonna call and find out what's going on, blah blah blah. Um, he then magically told me about a week later. Oh, they're going to do inspection on the on the house like in two days. So I was just like, okay, keep in mind, I'm, I'm taking his word for it. I'm taking his word for all this. So he's like, they're going to do an inspection. Um, once we get the inspection report back, then we will know what, you know, what we are going to be responsible for. What, what are we getting ourselves into? So, um, <laughs> I guess they did an inspection. He showed me an inspection report. Um, the only thing that they said that the roof had just recently been replaced, which he, I remember he was very happy about. Um, and the issues that they, that there were for the house were minor. It was not, it was not a bad, cause we did have a discussion about it. He was like, it's not, it's nothing that we can't handle. Then he said that we were set to close, um, the end of May. We were set to close the end of May. He told me it was going to be a virtual closing. You're probably like, what the hell is a virtual closing? I was just about to say that. <laughs> Which I'm going to sign <laughs> through FaceTime. Also, you can tell the memories is hearing her back. But your memories, but your memories when not you. The memories is her back hard, okay? You just see it flushed in her face. Because again, he's saying because of COVID, people are not closing in the office. They're doing a virtual closing where um, you would need to electronically sign the paperwork. This is what he's telling me. And so he was like, we're set to close like just before Memorial Day. And so for some reason, again, there's still that nagging part. For some reason, I didn't start packing. I, anyone that knows me will tell you I hate moving. I've done it enough in my life. I hate moving. But I did not start packing up that house at all. I was just like, you know, I'm pregnant. My body was changing so fast that it was like I can barely keep my eyes open half the day. Um, and so, no, I didn't start packing. And I remember... I did record, again, I was recording audio diaries just about every day. When something didn't sit right, I would verbally record it in the audio diary because I was like, I don't know what it is, but there's something. That was the theme of our relationship. I don't know what it is, but I know there's something. Um, and so I remember talking to myself in my little prayer closet because that's where I would do my recordings. And I remember thinking, what if he, what if we don't get this house? Like, what if we don't get, what if he's lying? But again, there goes that thought process of, why would he lie about this? Like, who makes up that they're buying a house when in fact they're not? And then he's showing you all this paperwork. Like, come on, you can't be that jaded that you don't even believe what's in front of you. All right. So now we're going to go into part five. I swear, the moment you give people the benefit of the doubt, whether it be friendship or, or relationship, that's where you end up getting fucked. <laughs> it happens every time. This person would never, they do. Okay, part five. Who the fuck did I marry? So I'm questioning all this stuff in my head out loud on my audio diaries. And then once again, I'm like, but look at what you well, look at what he's giving you. Like he's paying he it wasn't a question about money. It was just a question of are we really are we really about to move into this house? And <clears throat> 
keep in mind, he's paying all the household bills. He still is. So we were supposed to close before Memorial Day. We didn't. There was an excuse. There was always an excuse with him. Always an excuse. And I didn't know enough about the process to question stuff because I really wasn't involved the way I should have been. And it was giving me a lot of anxiety. So I'm pregnant with a lot of anxiety. Um, and if push, if I'm going to be 100% honest with y'all, I was not expecting that I was probably going to have a healthy pregnancy because I was stressed. And what I was stressed about is I didn't know what was going on because I wasn't really involved the way that a normal relationship would be involved. Just being honest. Um, so we did not close around, we move now into June. This is now going into June. And it's that gut feeling. When you don't listen to that gut feeling, that's when your gut get fucked. Like literally, oh my God. I already know where this is headed. Turns out he was probably a scammer, broke. He's still with the wife. Ex-wife. On June 5th, I looked at the house again on Realtor.com. I don't know what made me do it other than, and I don't mean to sound super spiritual. I know that people are like, you know, you may or may not believe in God, but I'm telling you, I believe with all my heart, probably the Holy Spirit was like, look at that house on Realtor.com. So I looked at the house on Realtor.com. This was around June 5th. It showed that the house was off the market. And I remember being like, okay, wait, what, is, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? Because ex-husband is telling me we're about to close on the house. We're about to close. It's our house. We got furniture, da 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 um, He's also telling me that he's been in contact with the realtor, his friend, who was telling him, you know, this is what was happening next. Here's what's going on. So the guy that we initially worked with apparently is completely out of the picture. But again, I was not heavily involved. We need to find what the fuck happened to that guy. Entertainers, we got to get on that. And also, I love God. Do you love God? What's wrong with you? I really do believe, whether you believe in God or not, there's some spiritual instincts that will give you signs for certain things. And it's true. You could try to ignore it, but it's true. So I'm just like, let me look at the house. I see it's off market. What the fuck does off market mean? Like now I'm really freaking out. So it shows the name of the real estate agent for the seller. I don't remember her name. I called her. And I said, you know, my, <clears throat> excuse me, I said, my husband and I, even though I wasn't married, my husband and I were looking at this house at 123 Main Street. And we really wanted to tour it, but now I'm showing it's off market. Is it not available? Or, you know, I, I pulled that card and she was like, oh, no, ma'am. Um, the home closed yesterday. It closed June 4th. Again, there are certain dates I just remember. Um, and I said, oh, it closed June 4th? I was like, really? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and she said, yes, ma'am. She was like, um, my, my sellers sold the house. And I was like, oh, man, okay. Well, I said, my husband and I really wanted, you know, we love the pictures of it. And we're getting ready to start a family. So I would have loved to have been able to, you know, have the opportunity to see it. I asked her something. I don't remember the specific question I asked her. And I don't even, I, I know why I asked the question because I was anticipating that my boyfriend at the time was going to have some sort of excuse. So I asked her something about the buyers. And I remember, and somehow, Again, forgive me, I don't remember the question I asked her, but the answer was that it was an older white couple. 
older white couple. So I get off the phone with her. I record an audio diary. And in the audio diary, I specifically say, okay, there is no house. He's going to have to get out of this lie somehow. Because now I realize at the very least, he was lying about um, him being the one who was under contract. I knew enough about that. So I was like, what, um, how was he going to get out of this? Again, I'm list I've listened to the audio diary in 2024. I literally said in that audio diary, how was he going to get out of this lie? And I was trying to think of ways on how he's going to do it. And something said to me, because I say it on the audio diary, I said, um, he's going to say it's a bad deal. And he's going to say he wants to pull out. Y'all keep in mind, I am pregnant. So I had a decision to make. As ugly as this decision was, I made the decision you're about to have a baby with this man. He's paying all the household bills. Let him get out of the lie. And that's what I did. Ooh. I purposely made the decision that I knew he was going to come back and I knew he was going to give me some bullshit on why he couldn't buy the house because he didn't know that I knew that house is already sold. The house is already sold. Um, and this is what she means by pathological. Because it's like, why lie? Why? If you couldn't afford it, if you didn't, was it under the contract? Why just lie? She already had your baby. You're already living with her. So why lie? This is what it means by pathological. It's unnecessary lies. And this is the part where I said, I'm going to be honest, even though it's going to make me look bad. Because most women in their right mind would have would have been like, I'm out. And I didn't. So, um, sure enough, he came home. He didn't really say anything that day. The next day I asked him about the house. And he said, my friend, the realtor, um, he was like, I'm talking to him because something's going on with the interest rate. And when he said that, I felt so much relief because I knew that I had been prepared for, he's going to give you some bullshit. So when he said there's something with the interest rate, I said, you know what? If the int This is literally what I said, y'all. If the interest rate isn't good, then we shouldn't move there. We should probably let this house go. We should cancel whatever furniture we, we ordered or, you know, appliances. Oh. And let's just look for another house. I said, I would like to be moved before the end of the year. I said, I really don't want to be nine months pregnant moving into a house. I would, li I would like to be done with this before then. And he was, he, the way I said it was so calm and he was like, okay, he was like, I'm going to call the friend, the realtor and tell him I'm backing out of the house and I'm going to see if I can get my earnest money back. And I remember looking at him, I was standing in the kitchen and I cocked my head to the side and I said, okay, get your earnest money back. And Tyler Perry! Bitch, you better be over there right in a way, because this is a story, okay? Instead of, uh, <laughs> why did I get married? Who the fuck did I marry? Better yet, I don't want you to marry. Tyler, this is already written. She needs to make a guest appearance. We already have how they look like. This is a story. <laughs> And at the end, make him try to act like, uh, make him like a murderer. Like he tries to kill her. Like you know what I'm saying? Put a thriller in that bitch. You did it with Mia Culpa, okay? And let's find another house. 
And so that's how that first house fell through. So um, fast forward, I'm looking, I keep looking at this to see how much time I have because you know they only give you 10 minutes. So this is part five, part six is coming up, but um, subsequently what ends up happening the next week, which is mid-June, I was at work um, and I started cramping, started bleeding. Um, and at this point, my doctor, I had just had an ultrasound earlier that day. So I went to work because the ultrasound was, was fine. I went to work and the cramping and the bleeding started. And I started crying because I, I kind of knew what was going on. And um, my doctor had called me and told me that when they did the ultrasound, they did not see a heartbeat. So she was like, this pregnancy is not going to be viable. So I'm crying hysterical. And now we're going to get into part six. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop it right here. Like I said, I'm going to be doing it in part. So like an hour of video. Okay, so we'll be continuing into part six. So that way we could get into what happened. I will say, though, this is a big mistake that she made because you basically allowed him. You didn't even allow him to lie. You excused his untruthfulness, which later on you paid a price for. So that's the big mistake that she made. And also having the baby by him, because that showed him that you're willing to trust him 100 percent with not knowing him as long as you should have before having a baby by him. The moving in, I feel like it was a little rush, but I'm not mad at it. Because like I said, I do think you should live with somebody before you get married with them, okay? I can't wait for the rest of the parts. Please don't spoil it in the comments. If y'all do, at least drop a little hint and let me know what y'all think um, down below. Now I'm curious to watch it, y'all. Ain't no personal 